Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. My name is C. Welcome if you're new. Today, I invited my friend from college, from my undergrad in China, um, Alice, to talk about her experience studying, working, and living in Finland, because that's where she got her master's degree. And Alice, would you like to tell us a little bit of, about your background and what's your experience like so far? Yeah, sure. So I'm right now graduating from my master uh, here in Finland from a business school, and I study design management and business analytics. And I will be working as a business analyst in a local management consulting firm soon after two months. Uh, in general, uh, I think uh, right now it's it's pretty good living here and then everything has settled and then it, it has some hardships before and then that's why we're talking about this subject today. What would be the difference between our expectations and reality? So really looking forward to it. Exactly. Thank you so much. So let's just jump it right into it. Um, what are the differences between your expectations for uh, working, studying in Finland versus reality um, after you came here? So maybe I will start from the, my expectations about the academic life here in Finland and what it actually is after experiencing two and a half year here. So um, before I came to Finland, I was first thinking since it's a master degree, it must be uh, really focus on critical thinking, you know, what you really think about um, certain items or topics. And uh, I think this uh, perspective turns out to be very correct, especially in the Nordic um, education, because they don't want you, like they don't have this concept of being the best or competition. It's not really a thing here in Nordic and they want you to be you, like what you think about this thing and stating your own opinion. And uh, examples would be like um, learning diaries. Would It's like a super common assignment in all of my classes. So I have to write like two or three learning diaries per week um, to show self-reflection. And this kind of self-reflection is not just like what you learn in class. And, and it's also, it need to include what you get inspired and search uh, after class. And then it's like a combination of uh, both the efforts uh, from your teacher and uh, your own research. And uh, also, I wonder what was your expectations like when we, when you when you were in China before you came to Finland? Um, what were your imaginations for studying life in Finland like? Uh, maybe I don't have like a very really specific uh, image, but I know that they definitely want me to state my own opinions and unique ones as well, uh, combining my background and my knowledge. So I think that's uh, pretty true in this perspective, but I also have other, uh, um, let's say expectations. So I thought that this uh, master degree would be super competitive so I, I thought that everyone would be fighting for answering questions in the class and it would be super heated and everyone's like super enthusiastic because it's a master degree it's not some bachelor you are forced to do it's more like you go with this major because of your passion right. and then when I came here you know let's just say everything you read about Finland is true and in my data analysis course one day my professor was like hello everyone uh, and then nobody replied like <laughs> dead silence and then he was like he's not he was not awkward at all he was like you know what when I say that you should say good morning professor but I guess we're not there yet <laughs> <laughs> would you say that's their culture to be more yeah, silent I think so. and shy yeah and I also asked my Finnish uh, friends like whether this is true or is it just one single uh, incident and there's like yeah, nobody asks questions during class. If you have questions, you ask after class. And I was like, what's the <laughs> point if you if the professor asks, like, what's your question? And then they have to work overtime after class. <laughs> they don't <laughs> ask it in class. But they're like, yeah, nobody, uh, nobody asks questions. And uh, it also shows in their, like, uh, in-class discussion, like, um, let's just say that the pauses between their sentences are super long and many times I thought they already finished and I, I was about to join you know and then they're like continuing so it's like quite oh awkward. my god 
So their speaking pattern is very different from maybe native speakers of English or even um, yeah. international students like us. Yeah, they're much slower. Uh, they would, this is... <laughs> oh my God. So, so they don't have the same level of urgencies that we no, do have, right? I don't think so. It's very slow society here and people respect boundaries and, and the personal space a lot. Okay. So I think... That's I also see. the reason. And then what's the testing situation like in schools in Finland? I think majors, like what specializations you have, like some specialization is they have midterms and finals and maybe some mock exams. Quizzes is super common though. Right. Um, but uh, they don't do quizzes in class. It's more like in order to download uh, your assignment, you have to do a quizzes. Oh my God. <laughs> so you have like five quizzes. And then you finish them 80% correct. And then you download your assignment and do another assignment. It's like That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I would never expect that to, to be our case in, in China, yeah. in schools in China. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I think one... I think one of the biggest uh, difference I find between my expectations and reality is that I thought that I would be super prepared for working after my graduation, you know, learning all the softwares and... I will be uh, learning how to solve business problems already. And then I apply those knowledge in work life. Right. And it turns out to be total, like a total opposite. So I think what we need to uh, change our mindset about university education is that it cultivates academic talents uh, instead of these uh, working capabilities or practical capabilities. So. Um, all the things you learn in university, they are like a simplified scenarios. For example, in my data analysis course, all the data you got kind of cleaned already and they set a really simple scenario. Okay. Oh, we have a shop and then this is our past sales numbers and please predict next month or things like that. But in real life, you, you never do that first. You don't know whether data is it's credible or not. And then what kind of models you need to use, like all these things you need to figure out yourself. But in school, they tell you everything. You just like one, two, three and do it and yeah. then you submit. So that doesn't really help in, in real life. Right. And also they focus a lot in discussing these concepts. Like for example, we have this course, like business model design, it sounds super useful, right? You'll be thinking, oh, I'm gonna develop this business model for a company. But no, they said, uh, there are different kind of definitions of business model. What do you think about it? What's your connection? I was like, why do I need to know about that? And they don't really teach. And they teach you, oh, there are different types. Yes. But they never taught you, how are you going to design a business model? Yeah. And then my next project right after that course is to design a business model for a company here. And then I totally don't know how to do it. And then so I feel like right. university doesn't really... Uh, prepared you for work life so don't have that illusions and also um, even though there are a lot of companies collaborating with the university hosting these kind of meetings or uh, what, what we call excursions so you can talk with the company representatives and um, maybe they will if they like you you might uh, get an interview chances but right. most of those require like Finnish language and you need to know that Finland is super it's a super small economy and then very closed. And then I feel like this country is not really in the process or in a real, it's in a really slow process to internalize like internationalization. So yeah. having those opportunities talking with companies doesn't mean that you're not going to get a Right. Did you expect that before you, uh, you went to Finland uh, that no. this is such a, this is such a close knit community and it's much harder to kind of um, get ahead in life if, if you don't speak the local language. Um, did you think to yourself that being able to speak English well enough would be sufficient for you to find a job and live Yeah, I was thinking about that because I like Helsinki is so famous. Like I think it's one of the biggest, like uh, how do you say the turning point or transportation point of Europe yeah. and then I thought that it would be super international and I do see a lot of foreigners here like much more than what I saw in Switzerland I spent one year there but I'm so shocked about how like I don't know closed this 
area is, and I think pro because they are such a small economy and they don't really need yeah. uh, international talents that much, and their clients don't really feel that or comfortable with foreigners because of this environment. So I didn't really right. expect that. So whoever wants to uh, come to foreign nations or even want to find a job here, please consider the points before you go. Then it will be super important. Yeah, that's something I didn't think about for countries that that are not English speaking. And how about everyday life? What is the social life like in Finland? <laughs> um, let's just say that Finland have this culture of heavy drinking. So <laughs> whatever social <laughs> occasions, there will be alcohol involved, and people will turn total different after they have. Uh, alcohol so before that everyone's quiet and then after alcohol and like people start talking and then they have this culture a sauna culture so people go to sauna completely naked (laughs) (laughs) i didn't go but uh, i've heard stories of international students who got just like shocked at the door (laughs) because we are wearing swimsuit and then when we open it everyone was naked and boys and girls they are in the same places, naked. <laughs> and, nobody, and nobody minds it? No, nobody. And then after the sauna, they even uh, go outside to jump into ice water and, or even roll on the snow and then run outside naked. And like <laughs> being naked is like super common in Finland. And people think it's not a big deal. It's just nature, you know, like how your natural body is. I, I cannot, sorry, this is not something I would understand. <laughs> yeah, that's something very unique about Finland. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, and then before you went to Finland, did you prepare for any sort of social life? Like I was determined to find a job in Europe, so I'm more prepared for like what kind of job I'm gonna find and I'm not that interested in social life because master is like two years and then this the work for summer job would start right away after you, you start. So the timeline is actually quite tight. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Um, and would you say, so speaking of that, would you say um, Finnish companies value uh, experience more than your degree? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that people here value your experience or your capability more than your degree. For example, in I work in management consulting and you know they have really high expectation for your degree already. But here yeah. in Finland, even though your bachelor is applied science and your master is university, they will still hire you. Uh, but I know that in China, as at least you are graduating from the top four yes. university, you have zero chance. Otherwise, you have zero chance to go to MBB firms. But here, you know, everyone, like I think many people have a lot of chance to go there. So that's very different. Yeah, yeah. I would say so, too. It's pretty similar in the U.S. Um, they value your work experience way more mm-hmm. than your degree, and especially which school you go to. Actually, your major matters more than your mm-hmm. school in the U.S. Would you say that's also the case in Finland? Or they I don't... think so. Um, yeah, because there are only limited amount of university here in Finland. And it's not like they have really high ranking in the international ranking. So it's more like you graduate from an OK university and you have relevant uh, major, most importantly, relevant experience. And they will yeah. give you a chance. And there are not too many people here. So you have higher chances to get an interview to know about you as a person. So, yeah. That's interesting. And then do they require you to have letters of recommendations? No, but it's something good to have. Oh, I see. So it's not a requirement. No, but motivation letter is a requirement. Oh, I think that's different from China. Yeah. All right. So after all of the aspects you were mentioning, what about some of the tips you have for people that are interested in going to Finland to study? Yes. So I think um, before you go to study, in my opinion, study is uh, like a stepping stone to your work. So I think before you decided where to go, you need to think about your career path first. So after you decided on that and then you choose your major or specialization on that. And also if you want to work in a country where you study, you need to uh, research on what would be the work environment or so what would be the requirement for well, work visa. Some specialization that might be easy, they might have the easier time to get a work visa than others. And also you need to research on the uh, working policy in, in those countries. For example, Europe. Europe is a big concept, but in Finland, it's relatively easy to get a work visa, but in Britain, 
you need a sponsorship and many companies doesn't want doesn't want this trouble and then in switzerland they have really strict headcount for like every year giving to work visa so it's kind of difficult to get in switzerland as well and also in some countries they might have have to prove that why you're not hiring a local uh people why you're not hiring eu people and then why you're hiring a non-EU people. So you're like uh, third choices. So it's kind of complicated. So please research on that before you go. And also if you want to go back to China after your study, you need to consider that like um, the Finnish or the Nordic university, they don't have such a higher ranking as let's say British American or French university. So HR might not even know where, which school you go and that might give you a disadvantage in job applications. That makes sense. And I would say you have to figure out what's the next step you want to yeah, take exactly. after graduation. And that's a really great, great tip. All right. Thank you so much for joining me and giving us so many insights on what it's like to study and work and live in Finland. Because I don't think there are too many people doing this subject. And I think your perspectives are really valuable. Yeah. Do you have any anything to say in the, in the end? Anything to add? Um, I just, I think I would uh, still emphasize on thinking about next step, like you mentioned. So that's really a uh, important step. And you, you might have a general goal in the future and then you can, you know, if I want to achieve it, what do I need to do before? So take like a backward view on those and then that's how you succeed. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you again. And uh, I hope those of you who are watching uh, also got something valuable from this conversation. And if you have any question for me or Alice, please leave it in the comment section below. All right. See you. See you. Bye.